Welcome everybody. Today's video finds us over here in Bagan. And we're gonna take a look at this big old huge temple that's right behind me. This is the tallest temple in Bagan. It was built by the fourth king of Bagan. And I know I'm gonna say it terribly, it's Tatanuchi or something like that. Anyway, I will uh, put the description of it in, uh, and that way you can see how it's spelled because I, uh, I can't pronounce any of these Burmese words. Anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look around here and uh, let's see what we see. So this is the first thing you see here. So we have some of the hawkers trying to sell me some stuff, which is at every temple. This is the old royal palace that's right here. So you see some of the old wall. And then over here they got the, you can take these little horses and uh, the little buggies around the uh, historical park here. And they got them kind of resting out here in the shade. You can see here they sell the lacquerware and the little boys selling postcards, the normal stuff that you see and some, uh, some of the paintings. So if you come here, you can, uh, you can buy some of those on the George Orwell, born Burmese days. All right, so uh, that's the normal stuff. So uh, anyway, this is the old wall and you can see how the vegetation is built up. Now this is 910 years old, is the kind of the era of this. So the fourth king of Bagan. And Bagan was a, just a thriving kingdom from the 9th to the 13th century. And it was actually even written about by Marco Polo when he was traveling back from China. He came down through the mountains in southern China and he came out here and he found this uh, kingdom that was out here. And eventually it collapsed due to the, uh, the Mongols. The Mongols destroyed their army but they never uh, came in here and conquered Bagan. There's some uh, people that say that the uh, Mongols actually came here to the city, and then some say that they never did. But they destroyed all the uh, war elephants and everything else. The tactics of the Mongols was hit and run. The elephants were too slow, so they could just shoot them with arrows and uh, cause them to either die or run away. So let's look at this thing. We have another base of one of the buildings over here. And it looks like they're doing a little bit of restoration. They got some of the bricks and sand. And they're doing some things over here. Not sure what they're uh, rebuilding. This is just absolutely massive. So they have some scaffolding up around, up at the top up there. So it looks like they're doing some restoration way, way up high. But check out that center. Yeah, that is really cool. And it has these series of smaller chetties all around. The styling is just fantastic. Yeah, I would really, I don't think you can go up there, but I would really like to be able to get way up high. I think they have it blocked off to where all you can do is see the, the Buddhas here. Looks like what they're doing here is they're uh, restoring the wall. You can see where They've already fixed it up here. And then they'll probably continue on around there. Another guy, he's doing his paintings right there in the shadows. Out of this heat, it is terribly hot today. I had to switch my camera because it just overheated when I tried to use it. So they have the plaster all around and it's the brick inside. Yeah, it's really cool to see these because uh, like when we went to Mingun, they have that one huge pagoda or that huge chetty that was never finished. It's just a pile of bricks. Well, this is finished and it's uh, quite amazing to see. And they have some more of the little stalls and stuff and a small little chetty over there with the Mon styling. And we'll go in here and we'll take a look. But does archway is huge just going in and there's uh, like the Buddha image in the plaster. And I think this might be like a Naga. And then they would have at one time had some Buddhas here, but now it's just the little cubby holes for them with the little umbrella thing over the top. Oh, this is interesting. So they do have some stairs to go up in there, but it's blocked off. 
and then the people are down here making some merit. And there's a little Buddha in the case. You can see where people have made the donations to the temples. Yeah, that's really nice. It looks like you can walk around here on the inside. This feels really nice in here. It has a nice little breeze. We have that door closed off. You see, this is two stories up here. So if you were up on that second story, you could see down there. You got a couple of the locals taking a nap here. So this is Ko Wen Yang. Maybe that's who made the donation. Yeah, it's uh, whoever made the donation to it. They were from Japan. Another Buddha image here. So they have a Buddha image in this case right here. Yeah, this is a massive little hall. So it's locked up, but you can see it's in a seated posture. It has its top knot up there. So it's kind of a little bit of a traffic jam. Everybody taking some pictures of that Buddha. And then another seated one here. Yeah, these are gold. You can see it's kind of faded off. Had the red underneath. So this is the entrance facing to the south. So it has the main Buddha there, and then it has two smaller ones. And they're all facing this right here. I'm not sure what this is about. It looks like people have touched it over the years. It's kind of black. You can see the styling of the face has got a high forehead and kind of a round Chinese styling face, but not quite Chinese. And it has the long ears and its toes are still all the same length, kind of what you see now. And it's sitting on this little, like the lotus flower pedestal. Yeah, I really like the styling here of the Burmese Buddhist. And it doesn't go to a top knot. It just kind of rounds off and it doesn't even have like the little hair rolls. All right, so let's keep walking around. So it looks like this interior of this chedi is, or this uh, temple is blocked off. You can just kind of walk around. You can see how they have all the gates and everything. And then we have this one over here. Yeah, I really like how this is built. It's quite interesting. And I think this one here was damaged pretty bad during the last round of earthquakes in 1975. And so it looks like here they had some murals that are kind of faded off. Looks like they've kind of repaired the wall right there. You can see how it was styled at one point all the way up there. Kind of looks like what you'd see with like some of the ceramic floor tiles, except for they painted them up there and then they had something right there in the middle, kind of a little square shape. And then they have some of the old Mon writing here. Yeah, this is cool. And then these murals are really, really faded. So they put plaster over the top. So you can see the murals are actually underneath the plaster that they've spackled up there. So a little bit of the history is kind of lost. And then this Buddha image here. And the same, it has three of them, and then it has this little pedestal right here in the middle. And so it looks like at one time, they would have had a Buddha image right up there also. Yeah, this is, this is really neat. And so it has a couple more of the seated images here. You can see we've went almost all the way around on the inside. That's back out there where they're repairing the gate, or the wall. And this is the first one I think that we saw through the, the outside gate. So this will be the last one we see around. So they have three big ones and then that one small one when you first come in. So you can see there's that small seated Buddha and it has this little pedestal and then the other Buddha and here. So if there were at one time, if there were any murals in here, they're long gone. They've whitewashed all the walls. And you can see how that plaster that's up there has flaked off. And it does look like, you see right there behind the Buddha, it does look like some of the old 
like Burmese script there on the wall. And then over here also, you can see a little bit of it. The rest of the whole wall has been just whitewashed. And you can see kind of how thick that plaster is. It's almost half inch thick or so here. And in this hallway. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any way to go up other than the stairwell that's blocked off. So they might just have it opened up for uh, ceremonies or something like that. You can see the high, the high ceiling and then the smaller arches here. And then this leads us back out to that first room we came to with the, uh, the Buddhas over there. Well, that's kind of a cool archway up there. That's on the second story. So this has, I think, four stories, but you just can't access any of them except for the ground floor. And the guy's selling their little things here. And we're gonna get a good look here at the, the main Buddha at this temple. That's kind of a cool gold sash around there. I've never seen it with uh, designs like that before. And it has kind of a wood thing behind it. There's a little bit of a glare from the sun. You can see that wood right behind the Buddha. And then it has the, the two guardians here. Check out that, that's like some Naga right there with uh, like tails coming out of his mouth, it looks like. And then of course they painted the lips red. All right, so we're back out front here. Let's take a look around really quick at some of the souvenirs. And we'll go over there and we'll look at that other little chetty. So it looks like they have some uh, clothing, dresses, hats. And there's some of the little horses with the buggies you can take. And then one look at it here. That sun's a little bright, but it's uh, quite cool. So this temple here, they say it was 1144. So they have this other little chetty over here, a little pagoda. It's quite nice in the shade. They have some more ruins and everything over there. So let's look inside of here right quick. So take off your shoes. And then we can see this. Oh yeah, this is really nice. So it looks like they have a Buddha image inside. And they have a ruin over there and some more stuff that they're doing some renovations. And so they have, looks like back to back Buddhas here. Yeah, this is interesting. So the Buddhists will come right here and then they will, uh, they will pray and make merit. And you can see it doesn't have as bright a red lips, but they still are red. Then it has the little symbol on his forehead and you can see the little sema behind him. And then the plaster is kind of cracking off in here, but still pretty cool. And this is the smaller one on the back side here. So it looks like the little table and stuff like that have been knocked over. You can see some more other ruins just all around here. There's kind of a cool looking one over there. And then just Chetty, Chetty, Chetty. Oh, that one is fantastic over there. Yeah, when I say that this is the land of the temples, they're not exaggerating. There are just thousands of them. They say there's like 2,200 that are still remaining between there and 3,000. A lot of them have collapsed down due to earthquakes and all of that. But the ones you see are just spectacular. So this is a, one of the ways to get around here in Bagan. So he's over here polishing up the brass. And you can see the, it's pretty cool looking. And then the little pony, they put a flower up on his uh, up on his head and then uh, over here what they do is they leave these for travelers so if you're thirsty they have these water set up in these uh, clay pots so you just come up here grab you a drink and on a day like today it's uh, really hot so it's kind of a nice thing and then there's the souvenirs and everything so that's gonna finish up our video over here and I'm gonna try it again it's the Tata Biyatamanyu monastery or temple it is the tallest uh, temple in Bagan and it's fantastic. It was built by the fourth king of the Bagan kingdom 
and it's uh, it's quite cool. You can't go up above the ground floor, so the second, third, and fourth floors are all blocked off, which is unfortunate. I would really like to get up there and see what's uh, what all is up there. But anyway, what we could see is quite cool. The styling of it is fantastic, and it's really nice to see those Buddha images that are around and all the stuff that's here. This is a fantastic area. So if you ever get a chance, come to Bagan. This is just amazing. When you're going along, you just see temples and temples and temples, and it's just unlike any place I've ever been in my whole life. So uh, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'm sure uh, the images aren't gonna capture just how magnificent some of these buildings are, and this one is just, uh, it's really cool. So uh, if you're new to my channel, subscribe and stick around and you're notified when I post a new video. If you've been here, or if you have any questions, uh, ask me in a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. And definitely smash the like button. And until next time, from over here in Bagan, remember, life is a journey. Until next time, enjoy.